Hello, it's Stuart, the Unrepented Atheist here. We've got John calling here, speaking to Matt Delante and Seth Andrews, and he's claiming that the gumball analogy in some way proves that a god exists, mainly on this principle that, as they've found, uh, the more people that put in guesses on, shall we say, a jar of gumballs, the closer, if you take an average of all those guesses, will be to the actual number. And this is actually, I think, being confirmed. They've They've actually found this to be the case. The more guesses that you've got, then the the more accurate that it's going to be. They may not actually get, get on the exact number, but they will get closer the more guesses there are. So, for example, a million uh, different people guessing the number of gumballs in a jar, uh, take an average of that, will be more accurate than, say, if just 10 people guess. On this principle, he's claiming that <laughs> um, because more people guess that on the question of whether a god exists or not, the answer is yes. Uh, the gumball analogy principle proves that there is a God. So let's just have a listen to, you know, what Matt is going to say about all this. A normative distribution. Well, I mean, I, on, I, I'm, I'm on, looking at live You're going to get so. a normative distribution on multiple trials. The fact, the fact is, how many gods have we ever demonstrated in the history of the world? Demonstrate? I mean, I mean, I, I don't know, like, what do you mean by demonstration? I mean, I mean, God could be anything. To, to show that they actually exist. Well, I mean, we have, you know, the Bible as an example. I mean, this is absolutely crazy. If it had been demonstrated and it was generally accepted as a fact that a certain God exists, then obviously uh, we would all be in that religion. If it was demonstrated to me as true that the Christian God exists, yeah, of course, I would be a Christian, well, most likely. And uh, so would everybody else. This is a, it's weird that he can't answer this question he, and he goes straight to the Bible and cites that. He cites that as being evidence for the existence of God. Why did he come on and say that rather than use the gumball analogy? I mean, it's a historical Is the Bible a the God that has been shown to exist? Well, the Bible is a framework or, or you know, a, a book that we can use as reference to show that God does exist. <laughs> the Bible is a book. How does it show that God exists? This is crazy. If he believes that the Bible is evidence for the existence of God and it's so convincing, why is he referring to the gumball analogy? Why not just come on and say, well, the Bible's proof in the existence of God? I mean, the scriptures, they, they point they point how to how Jesus is true and all. And you know, <laughs> stories that you know that we've learned over time. Um the lessons that we've learned in the book. I mean, it's it's true. It's mostly true. But I don't get it. And we how, can be how does how does how does the Bible show that God is real? I mean, I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, the, I know. the book itself. I mean, if the Bible showed that God is real, why would anybody need to appeal to the wisdom of the crowd? Repeat that question again. Sorry. If the Bible demonstrated that God was real. Why would anybody need to appeal to the wisdom of the crowd? Well, because, you know, some people like atheists, like they just, they just don't believe the Bible is straight, you know, they don't believe the book, the, the word of God. So, you know, sometimes we have to come up with other things in order to convince others of, <laughs> of what is true, which is why I brought the gumball experiment, because I mean, like, I well, actually, I've got to agree with him there. The reason that theists call in week after week, or in particular Christians, with the Kalam cosmological argument, the fine tuning argument, uh, etc., and now the gumball analogy, or the the wisdom of the crowd, is because we don't accept the Bible as uh, convincing or sufficient evidence for the existence of God. Yeah, I absolutely agree with him in, in that sense. Mentioned in the beginning of the call, like you have all, all these other religions that um, have their own. I'm sure they may not be the same God I'm talking about, but nonetheless the god that they're, they're mentioning and i think, I think what he was in, in the earlier part of the call he was saying well there are different traditions from around the world but they all kind of point to the same thing we've got judaism islam we've got buddhism hinduism etc they've all got kind of gods and the general wisdom uh for people across the world is that uh, there are gods there is some kind of transcendental uh reality controlled by a divinity of some kind uh, this is the wisdom of the crowd, which means that, you know, maybe maybe there's some truth in all of the religions. I think maybe that's what he's getting at. In the day, I mean, the whole question, the whole point of, of the show is, you know, whether or not God is real. And I mean, you have all these 
a bunch of people talking about, you know, how God, you know, God is not real. You know, I don't know if God exists. God is real. But um, the whole the whole point of, of the gumball, I guess, so to speak, is to prove that God does exist. Yeah, actually, no, that's not the purpose of the gumball example, and it does not do that at all. Here's another gumball example for you. Let's imagine, uh, with deference to Tracy Harris, let's imagine that I have three jars in front of me right now, since you're not looking, and one of those jars is full of gumballs that are the normal ones that you would see, and the second jar is full of invisible, undetectable, intangible gumballs, and the third jar is empty. How do you tell the difference between jar number two and jar number three? I, let's, I mean, I can't, are there see-through jars or can I not see them? You can see through them. Okay. Do you think you can see I mean, invisible, okay. intangible gumballs? And, I mean, I can't see, I can't, I can't see what's not there. Well, that's the thing is one of these jars is empty and has no gumballs in it. And another one has invisible, intangible gumballs. How do I tell the difference between them? Yeah, he said, I can't see what's not there. I think he missed the point. One of the gumball jars is actually full of gumballs, but they are invisible and they're intangible. So there is something there. It's just that there's no way of detecting that there is something there. They're invisible balls, but okay. When you say intangible, do you mean like not there or like just like intangible? I want to make sure I know. Means that you can't touch them, you can't feel them, you have no way of detecting them. And the question was, how do you tell the difference between a jar full of intangible, invisible gumballs and a jar that is empty? Don't they look the same to us? can't i don't fucking know to be honest cool this is unbelievable i mean matt asked this question one and a half minutes ago and the answer is no we can't tell the difference between the two jars i don't see what the difficulty is here let's try it a different way how do you tell the difference between a god that is hiding and doesn't interact with reality in a detectable way and a god that doesn't exist Well, I mean, the thing is, though, there, there's plenty of ways of proving God, though. I mean, like... Yeah, well, this is the thing, and I could kind of see this coming, that he was going to say this. Um, he would say that uh, God has manifested uh, himself and does interact with reality, and we can test that. Uh, we can see God at work in the world through various miracles. We've got the Bible, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, yeah, I could see what, what, what his answer was going to be here. Like I wouldn't say so, God is necessarily John, hiding. John, that's not the question I asked. Of, that's not the question I've asked. You've already you know? failed. You've I already mean, failed. The the day, you've already showed... failed. Mul you've already failed multiple times to demonstrate that God exists. I'm asking a very specific question, which is how do you tell the difference between a God that doesn't exist and a God that exists but hides so that you can't detect him? But I don't believe in a God that hides. That's the thing. John, did I ask you what you believe in? I asked you how you tell the difference between these two things. A God that doesn't exist and God that hides? Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. But you seem to have detected a God. How'd you detect that God? Well, based off of people's experiences and guesses, like, again, the gumball experiment, because, I mean, you have different people claiming that, you know, a God exists, and, you know, obviously you have other people that don't believe in, that a God exists, but... The whole point is you you grab the majority of the answer or at least the average answer and no. there you go i mean what happens if we accept his reasoning say okay well uh the majority of the world's population believes in a god therefore there is a god what happens if shall we say which looks like the case anyway in millennia to come it swings the other way and we've got the majority saying well actually no i don't believe in a god which is kind of that's the way it's going in western civilization anyway that we've got more people who don't attach themselves to religion and just don't believe in God. What happens when the balance shifts the other way? Does that mean that a God then doesn't exist? 
mean, you no, know, people, you don't. That, that's the, that's the fallacy we were talking about. Matter, they matter. That, I mean, that's they, why, so you've you just know, committed, to church because, John. You know, the experiences John, impacted them. John, yes, I'm going to yes. mute you if you don't stop talking. Do you want me to mute you so you stop talking, or just say, okay, here's the thing: you've just committed oh, a number listen. of different. You, I, I want you to listen because you're the one committing fallacies here. You're the one who's committing a, an argument ad populum. You're the one that is committing uh, fallacies regarding you should believe something if the majority of people believe that. What are you going to do when when Muslims outnumber Christianity Christians? Are you going to convert? Wait, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, I mean. I can you first point to me as to why I'm making that pop up fallacy? Because, I mean, my my thing is, though, that, like, we should take the answer that is the average, not the most. Okay. So there, that's another fallacy, that the truth lies somewhere <laughs> in the middle or that the average answer is the correct answer. It's not. Those are all fallacies. If when when is when is Muslims when Muslims are more populous, when the average view is that the Muslim God is correct. Are you going to convert to that one? Well, I mean, do, I'm not a Christian. Do you go by the median, the mean, or the mode? I, I go by the median. Median. Okay. So when the median view is that the God of Islam is the correct one, are you going to convert to Islam? Might as well, yeah. I mean, like, a god's a god. I mean, the whole point of the gumball is the point that you know a god even a exists in the god. first place. I mean, if that god is true, then I'll believe in that god. Well, I suppose, yeah. I mean, he. I suppose he could say yes. His point is that uh, the median view is the correct one, and that first, let's establish that there's a god. That's one question, and that's what he's really phoned in about. He's not phoned in about the truth of Christianity, has he? And then after we've established and agreed, yes, there is a god based on this. Uh, reasoning, then we can talk about which is the true God and which is the true religion. That's a separate question. Yeah. So how do you know if it's true? Because right now the median is in one location and the median will change. If the median right now is Christianity and the median changes to Islam, did the God that exists change because we changed our opinion? I wouldn't say necessarily because we changed our opinion. Maybe we just understood, you know, the type of God that we're dealing with. I mean, John, you know, you're not thinking. Sometimes... You're not thinking. Listen, listen, you're not thinking. You just said that you'd go with whatever the median is because it's true. If the median changes, then the old median wasn't true, was it? Not necessarily because, I mean, if they're both no, 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 and that median position changes to where the Muslim God is real. Did the God that is real change or did our opinion about God change? I think, I think, I, I mean, I feel like we just got the God wrong. That's it. So, so the median was wrong in the past, right? Kind of. How do you know? Yeah, I mean, there are other. The, the, I believe that all. Of course, we did not have people compiling statistics and doing opinion polls, say a thousand years ago. But let's say that a thousand years ago, we questioned. Um, I don't know. Should we say five hundred scholars and ask them? No, not scholars. Just general population. What shape is the Earth? And more than fifty percent said in those times, which is probably fairly likely, the Earth is flat. And we now know that the earth isn't flat. There's an example where um, an average of the opinion was actually wrong. You only need one example to falsify this. And his whole argument just comes crushing down. No, it's not wrong now. Because like, like, I, like going back to Gumbel experiment, the majority of the answer or the median answer, I should say, the, the, the more that we have the same overlapping answers, the closer we get every single time. 
That's the whole point. That's the whole gumball. I, I'm experiment. done. I've enjoyed the well, show. Man. I have nothing to add. The law of probability or probability experiments prove God is specific God somewhere, but that God can change. Okay, um, I'm going to leave it there. I'll post a link to the call under the under the video. You can go and listen to the whole call if you want. Um, obviously, the gumball analogy uh, was devised, I think, either by Tracy Harris or Matt to demonstrate certain points about general skepticism. And uh, it's a completely different kind of um, exercise in terms of taking the average of estimates as to how many gumballs are in a jar compared with answering a question like the existence of God. They're just two, two completely different kinds of questions. So, okay, well, I think that both coasted enough to demonstrate that taking the median of opinion on whether a God exists or not is not actually a reliable way of determining whether a God actually exists. Thank you very much for watching. I look forward to your comments. Bye for now.